Welcome everybody to the New Fly Fisher. I'm your host, Colin McEwen. In today's show, we're gonna be talking about streamer fishing. I love streamer fishing. We're gonna be walking and waiting. I'm here with Bob Jacklin from Jacklin's Fly Shop in Montana, and we're on the Madison, we're at the, actually the lower end of the Madison River as it's just about to go in the lake. We're looking for brown trout, we're looking for rainbows. We're gonna talk about the different types of lines you need to use. We're gonna talk about different types of flies. Very technical show, I know you're gonna love this. Stay with us. That was awesome. Let him go back to live another day. These are extremely strong fish. Here he goes. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah, good fish, good fish. earlier about having the optimum condition. Here we've got a good example of the family Heptogeneidae. Uh, very flat music, sweet music. This is why you need a lot of backing. Today I'm in beautiful West Yellowstone, Montana. This is an incredible part of the USA and probably one of my favorite destinations in the West. West Yellowstone is a pretty and vibrant little town that serves the needs of visitors and fly fishers from around the world who come to sample the superior fishing here. This is a fly fisher's mecca. My guest today is the renowned guide and fly shop owner, Bob Jacklin. Bob is an extremely knowledgeable fly fisher with a wealth of experience fishing this part of Montana. His shop has been a must-see destination for fly fishers visiting West Yellowstone for many years. Bob is a major supporter and active member of the Federation of Fly Fishers, getting involved in many education and conservation programs. Bob loves catching big trout and, like me, shares a passion for streamer fly fishing. We started the day by discussing how we'll approach this type of walk and wade streamer fishing. I'm going to go up to the top of the bend here and work this nice bend all the way around. And I'm hoping that some of these larger fish are going to be holding in tight close to the bank. Okay. Um, the sun just came out, it's a cold day in late August here, but uh, we're going to fish streamer tactics, we're going to really fish fall style for these fish and, and just be interested to see if we can take a couple of nice sized browns or rainbows in here. So we're going to have a day of a bit of broken sun and a lot of cloud, it's very, very cool. Uh, you've had me put on an intermediate line, but a nine foot leader, uh, six pound tippet. Six pound tippet. Okay, and, and why don't you tell me about how you want me to fish over here with this Well, uh, here setup. we don't want to go straight across the river. We want to slightly down, but not very, not way down, just slightly, not quartering down, but just almost across river, get the fly to in and give it plenty of action, just so it looks like some sort of a leech or something that's alive and the fish will, let's hope we can stimulate their attack today. Okay. Now, I guess one of the other things that I know people really like to know about is, is the retrieve. Um, we were talking about this on the way here, and that is that we're going to mix it up a bit to find out how passive or active the fish are. So you're saying faster water, you like to strip it in a little bit quicker, and then sometimes you like to have it a little less. On real fast water, I tend to strip in a little slower, but with the woolly bugger, I like tip action. With a streamer fly, I very seldom use tip, I just strip it in, but the bugger, I like the way it falls. So I do think a jig action is, is uh, warranted with that woolly bugger. Okay. They always take it on the fall. Yeah. Okay, so um, we've got a good wind here, so we're obviously going to put a little distance between us because uh, once you see me cast, you'll yeah. know why. <laughs> but anyways, um, where do you want me to go in here in the river? Why don't you go right here and angle slightly down and try to get the fly near that bank, and I'll go up above you and fish down with you, and hopefully you're the first one in the pool, and that's where I like to work it, so maybe you're the first one to grab one. I want you to use that big net for a big All right, fish. let's do it. Okay. Good luck. Today, Bob and I will be doing a search for active fish. This type of streamer fishing entails making a few casts to a select piece of water or structure. If there are no strikes or follows, then we keep moving downstream. This segment of the Madison is perfect for this type of fishing because there's lots of room for casting and plenty of great fishing structure. Bob, one of the things that I think a lot of people like to know about when they're streamer fishing is how critical structure is on a river and, and that we're looking for ambush points, logs, any place that the big alpha predators can hide behind because I mean they're in the prime lies and they're there looking to pick off things in the in the current as you know not just nymphs but 
bait fish, little rainbows, whatever. Sure. I mean, can you talk a little bit about this? Because we're looking at one right here where I've just been fishing at. This is a great spot because you've got a shallow, a nice long bend, and it shallows out, and then it deepens out into this grassy bank there, which is obviously undercut. The water slows up a little bit. But as we're talking, we're seeing a lot of olive flies out there, so we got some blue-wing olives hatching out. Don't see any rises yet, but that's a great ambush point. Also, it's a resting point. Down below there is a good riffle coming up. The browns on the spawning run, rainbows as well, will come up and hold in that. And when they're holding rested, they'll take a, they'll feed. Once they're moving through in this fast water, they may not feed as well. They're moving. But right there, that's an ambush point. They'll hold, they'll rest, and they'll feed. Right. So we want to swing our flies like it's going right in there. And then as we pump it and strip it, it looks like it's getting away. And, you know, trout are predators. They're also prey. And that's interesting, but they're predators and prey. But when they see something smaller than they are getting away, they're going to use their instinct to chase it and grab it. And yeah. maybe they're not even hungry. They'll just grab it. Yeah, and that's, and that's what we get a key in. For, yeah. And that's what the presentation we were talking about is so key to this, right? Yeah, it's exactly right. Just work down. You know, the other thing, I have a theory when we're fishing for big browns like this and rainbows with streamers, you want to move through a pool rather quickly. Let them see your fly, but not too much. Move through, give it a rest, and walk back up and go through again. But don't keep pounding the same fly, because once they turn off on it, you're done. They yeah. won't take it. That's so a good it's point. best to let them see it, a couple of casts, good casts, then move through. Maybe let your buddy, you know, it's not always the first guy through gets the fish. Maybe it's the third guy. Mm -hmm. But just take, give it that little rest and go through again. Structure is critical to trout because it provides them with several elements that are key to their survival. The first is protection from predators. Montana, like many locations throughout North America, has an abundance of raptors such as eagles and osprey, which will quickly snatch an unwary trout for their supper. Structures such as fallen trees, log jams, beaver lodges, undercut banks and other features will provide trout with overhead cover. The second key element that structure provides is access to natural feeding lanes. Log jams have great induced current flows which create excellent feeding lanes for trout. This means fish will expend minimal energy to access food flowing in the current. The third element that structure provides, particularly for large trout, is ambush cover. Large trout, which are focused on big meals, are always looking for cover to hide behind, from which they can pounce on careless bait fish and juvenile trout. Large trout require a great deal of protein in order to sustain their health. Eating smaller fish is their best option. Structure provides them with ideal ambush points for staging their attacks. I got a real little one here, Colin. Real little brownie. Oh, they're here. We'll let this guy go and real small fish, but you know, that's trout fishing. We catch the big ones and we catch the little ones too. It's a nice little brown wild fish. They don't get any better than that. Well, I got a small one. Maybe we can go back and get his granddad. For streamer fishing under these walk and wait conditions, there are several fly line options anglers should consider that will help make them more effective in presenting their streamers. I'm going to talk a little bit of the type of fly lines I like to take when I go streamer fishing, whether I'm in a boat or I'm waiting like we are today. Now today what uh, Bob and I have been using mostly has been a intermediate line. This is great in depths down to about four feet on these rivers. Um, again, uh, the leader we're using is seven to about nine feet. Other fly lines I always bring, of course, I bring a floating, and that's so you can switch over quickly to dry fly fishing if uh, that uh, starts to happen. But at the same time, if it's uh, relatively shallow water, I'm using something like a big bullet head uh, woolly bugger like this, then I don't necessarily need to use an intermediate or a sinking line. Full sinking lines are probably my favorite. They're easy to cast, you don't have to false cast a lot with them, and best thing about it, they get down quick. So if we start getting some deep holes or some big, big pockets, this is what I like to use, a full sinking line. We also have a sink tip. Now I find sink tips a little bit more, uh, they're a little more troublesome to, to cast, but at the same time, they get down to where you need to go really quick. Uh, you can get them in different lengths from 12 feet up to 20 foot tips. But uh, I like to use them in very fast sink rates because you want to have it that your flies following the sink leader, sinking leader as it goes through the hole. The other thing is you want the leader to be very short. 
Uh, max I make the mine is maybe two to three feet. I'm stripping in this intermediate, it's a Cortland clear camo intermediate line and it's the best line I've ever found for any type of wet activity where you're stripping in line. Woolly bugger, streamer, it casts real nice, it just shoots through the guides, but the rule is it's a, it's a type, pretty much an intermediate sinking, so as soon as it hits the water it'll sink, but it doesn't sink at a real fast rate. Um, in fishing a sinking line, the trick is to always roll cast first, get your line on top, then make your pickup and present your fly. Uh, what I'm doing is covering a lot of water with this big woolly bugger and hopefully we're going to find a big fish that wants it. If you can bring your net over here, I'll bring them to you there. Can you bring them in over here? I'll... Yeah. Get him in this quiet water here and we'll net him. He looks like a decent fish. How's he feel? I haven't seen him yet. And he's not too big. He's not huge, but he's a good, decent fish. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's like a brownie. Is that what it is? Yep. Nice brown. He took it on the second or third strip. Get him up and we'll... There we go. There go. Nice brown trout. That's yeah, a nice 13-inch fish or so. Nice fish. That's a good way to start the day. Yeah. We're getting to that good water. Look at that nice undercut bank over there. So I know. It's prime territory, isn't oh, it? Oh, it's prime. Anytime you have an estuary situation, you might have some big fish moving through. Let me just can you get them up? Yeah, I can. Just nice move. pretty marks on them. Nice wild fish, too. Yeah. Nice brownie. Beautiful? Let's get them back in there. There we go. Nice. That's what it's all about. Love. There it goes. There he goes. All right. That was hey. great. Good deal. Now, it's only you let me go first now. Why don't you take the, the lead and I'll go behind you, okay? All righty. We'll work this bend all the way around here. It's a beautiful bend. This is one of my favorite areas for fall fishing. Of course, it's almost fall. Up here in the high country in Yellowstone, fall is September 1. Yeah. <laughs> really? So, uh, all right, I'll jump in here and we'll work on down all the way to that stump and see what happens. There's a wide variety of streamers available to anglers. Color, action, and most importantly, silhouette are the key factors to consider when making a selection. The main prey of large trout in any system is usually baitfish of various types, which is what we want our streamers to imitate. The pattern we're using today is one of my all-round favorites on any body of water, woolly buggers. Woolly buggers are a great pattern to use under these conditions because they represent so many food sources for trout, such as sculpins. If you slow down your presentation, this pattern will even look like a leech. I always try to have an assortment of woolly buggers in black, olive, and purple in my fly box because of their effectiveness and versatility. Fish on! All right, now, that's a classic example, Bob. Yep. <laughs> Um, we gave up I on gave the fly. Up, I let the fly swing down to the end, <laughs> and I started to reel in, and this guy hit. <laughs> All right. That's right. And you notice that was at the tail end of the pool where he took, too. That fish came up off that riffle, was resting. He's in the tail end of that pool, and your fly swung right into him. Perfect. Yeah. You know what I love about streamer fishing, whether they're small or big, and I don't think it's a real big fish, but they always hammer streamers. Oh, they take it. Yeah, you know, you know just, when you get a strike. We live for the strike. Oh, oh, he just got off. That's good. All right. Long line release. <laughs> we saw him anyway. Let's go get another Let's one. Let's get another one. All righty. Nice fish. Yeah, it's a nice one. He As in all successful fishing, presentation is crucial to your success. You can have the right pattern, fly line, rod, and reel but it's all useless unless you present the fly in a natural manner. Your presentation will trigger big trout into striking if you just understand some of the options you have available to you. What I'm doing here, Colin, is I'm fishing really a fall tactic, streamer fishing, and I'm fishing my fly pretty quick. We're using about a size eight woolly bugger, little bead head bugger, and I'm fishing that undercut bank as the river swings around here and I'm giving it a lot of tip action. We're jigging it and I believe they like to take it on the fall. It looks alive when you pull it and strip it from them and then when you stop stripping it drops. As soon as it drops it looks like it's hesitated or wounded or something and they they pick it up. So I'm going to continue working around. This is that intermediate Cortland line which I like so much because it casts well and it sinks. So anytime you're stripping a woolly bugger 
or a streamer or anything like that in a lake or streamer or a river, I like this line here. It really does a nice job. It's my favorite casting line. Cast real well too besides. What I'm doing here is a, oh, there's one. Just gave it a bang. I just had a bang on the fly. They're, they're short little takes. It might be a smaller fish, I'm not sure. I had a big one up above. But what I'm doing is I'm casting it right tight to the bank, let it swing slightly. So I'm casting about 100 degrees. A little slight pumps with a little retrieve because the current's doing most of the action, but this is just a part a little bit extra on it. And it's important to fish it all the way through right up to here and then bring it in because I've had a lot of hits just on the inside seam. And as you can see, it's important not to wade in too far because a lot of times you're going to wade right in on top of fish and you don't even know it. See if we can get this guy to strike again. We've got a little black woolly bugger on right now. Hang on, how do I get Whoa, this fish? There he oh. is. Had him. <laughs> we, you had that little one? Yeah. <laughs> There's a little guy, you can tell. Um, all right. Well, Bob, that guy took, I swung it past this uh, structure over here. And uh, he took it's just a little, little trout. He hammered it pretty that hard. That looks like another brown too. We haven't got one rainbow yet today. Yeah, nice it is. Fat it looks brown. like it's another. Yeah, it is brown. Yeah, it's a little brown. Nice brown. You just take them off. These are barbless hooks, so it just pop off real fast. Yeah. There he goes. Nice. Outstanding. We're Where's getting closer to the reservoir. We got about three pools, and we'll be there. All so right. So they're starting to get hopefully some bigger fish in here. I got a date with that spot right down there. There's a nice big fish. I saw him last week. I'll see if I can get him. Well, he asked me to talk a little bit about the Federation of Fly Fishermen. And actually, the Federation of Fly Fishers is the right name. And I've been a member, a charter member, and I joined when I was 22 years old. I'm going to be 60. I've been a member all those years and it's more than just a club or a organization of fishing clubs. It's an organization of individual people that want to learn more about fly fishing and exchange ideas. We get together in our conclaves and through our magazines and different uh, TV deals and uh, local clubs and we exchange ideas. We learn from each other and we really encourage more people to join. The Federation is something where you can give back to fly fishing. We have conservation programs, programs for the Boy Scouts, merit badges, on and on and on what we do in the Federation. It's all for fly fishing. That's what we're about. We're about teaching fly fishing, making it a better sport, uh, learning more. I've learned from some of the great fishermen of the world, being have, having the opportunity to see Lee Wolf, Joan Wolf, guys like Mel Krieger, Craig Matthews from West Yellowstone, all these type people give, uh, give different programs during these conclaves and it's a mere $29 a year to join. We're not talking about a lot of money, but it's something you can learn. And if you think you're beyond learning, it's something you can teach, you can give. So it's give and learn. None of us think we know it all. We're always learning from someone else and that's, that's what makes it fun. The Federation wasn't organized so you could get something. If you want to spend your $29 and think you're going to get something, you are going to get something, a nice magazine and be a part of a great worldwide organization. But the Federation was meant to give, give back to fly fishing. If you love fishing like I do, trout fishing and fly fishing for trout, the Federation is for you. Whether you're a beginner and don't know anything about fly fishing but want to try, or you're a seasoned angler of 30 years, we suggest that you join the club and be a part of it. Some great people you'll meet. Big boy, good fish, good fish on. Feels good, he isn't that big, but he, he, for today, he's the best thing I've had today. Feels pretty good. Nice and easy with him. He's hugging the bottom, whatever it is. This is right at the estuary, we're right here at Hebgen Lake. It feels pretty heavy, it's a good fish. 
Come on, baby. Oh yeah, big boy. Real big boy. That's a big fish. Come on, baby. Don't lose this guy. Come on, easy. Easy. This is nice fish. This guy's over 20. Big male. We got him. There's a fish for you. Wow, big male brown. And look at the hook came out. That fish is about 22 inches. Big hook jaw male brown right at the estuary of Hebgen Lake. They don't get any better than this. No, oh, well done. Look at the size of that Look guy. Look at that, on a little size eight woolly bugger. Yeah. That's a nice big fish. Well, that says about 21, 22 inches. Big male brown. They don't get any better. That's a Montana brown there. Look at the size of that baby there. Wow. Let's get a shot of him. Geez, look at that fish. Look at the spots. Big hook jaw male. Okay. Yeah, let here. him go right away and that's just let him go back to live. live another day. Okay. Hey, right he'll go non as 21. Yeah. Wow. Bob. Hey. I can't even get my glove on, it's okay. <laughs> nice fish. Well done, well done, Bob. Good fish. Right, we're right here at the estuary. Everybody, if you want to catch big fish like that, use streamers. Nymphs work, yes. Dry flies work, but for real exciting cakes, and as you just had there, or just pow strike, there's nothing like streamer fishing. We did a, had a great day here, Bob. We're waiting on the Madison. I recommend you come see Bob if you want to try fishing like this or drift fishing. I'm, my hands are shaking. I love big fish. <laughs> that was great. Yep. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next week. Hi, I'm Tom Rosenbauer. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this and you want to see more, subscribe and you can get all our weekly uploads.